Welcome to Prep Sports Tonight, focusing on high school sports at Chapel Hill, East Chapel Hill, Carborough, Orange, and Cedar Ridge High Schools. Now, here's your host, Jeff Hamlin. And welcome to this edition of Prep Sports Tonight here on 97.9 FM WCHL. I'm Jeff Hamlin, getting ready for Orange versus Wilson Fike and the 3A state playoffs. It begins tonight in Hillsboro. Orange comes in with a perfect record of 11 and 0. In fact, they've only given up three touchdowns this entire season. Fike, the Golden Demons, coming in from the Big Eight Conference. They are six and five. Right at the top of the show, good luck to the Chapel Hill Boys soccer team tomorrow. They will go up against Marvin Ridge for the 3A state championship. That match is taking place tomorrow. By the time you hear this, it'll be tomorrow, Saturday at two o'clock at the Dale Soccer Complex at NC State. Now, moving on to business tonight, Orange versus Fike. And we start our preview of the game with a word from Orange defensive end Stone Edwards. Stone Edwards, Orange defensive lineman, joins us now here on Prep Sports Tonight as we get ready for Orange versus Fike. And Stone actually joined us a few weeks ago, but he got interrupted because we talked to him during practice and then he was called over for a drill. So he was starting to delve into what you're going to get into once you're done with football. And that caught my attention because what is it that you're interested in doing? Uh, Biomedical engineering, sir. Now, you you don't have to start that sort of stuff. I'm I'm wearing a Motorhead T-shirt right now. I'm not a guy that can work. What did you decide on? uh, What what made you decide on that? Well, uh, my parents are both PhDs that work up at the University of North Carolina. And so I've always been heavily influenced by education and especially biology. It always piqued my interest. And then surgeon-type things piqued my interest as well. And so did prosthetics, but I didn't want to make prosthetics. I wanted to make synthetic things, like synthetic limbs, synthetic organs, instead mm-hmm. of making them plastic and metal. Okay. So you did you go with your parents to work at times in the past? And is that what triggered your fascination with it yes i would uh explore the campus and really? sometimes walk into classes and it would just be i was just blessed to have that type of experience to know what um a college lecture would be like mm-hmm. know what a biology class is like to sit through and this is when i was a kid and so it was just it was just amazing so you were a 13 14 year old sitting in a classroom with 20 somethings learning about these things years ahead of time yes sir not not really Learning, but... but just you know, fascinated. Yes, sir. It. Yeah. Huh. That's amazing. Now, you've been offered by several service academies, Air Force, the Citadel. Am I correct in saying yes, that? Yes, sir. I think VMI was in there, too, if I'm not mistaken. Not VMI? No, sir. Okay. You also told me you went to the to West Point uh, at one point last summer. What's... And this wasn't a technically a recruiting trip, but what what's it like going up there to that campus? West Point is a completely different feel from any other campus. Um, You can look at the pictures online. You can look at a whole bunch of different pictures, but you're not really going to know West Point until you get up there. Mm -hmm. It is not, you know, a bland campus like everybody would expect a military campus to be. It's just, (laughs) it can't really be described in words. You have to go and see it yourself. Yeah. And going to Army... And committing to football is a real commitment because it's not just four years and then you're done with the university. There's a commitment to come after you're done playing at Army and Navy, for that matter, too. And I guess the coaches explain that to you quite clearly, right? Yes, sir. In any, for, um, in any service academy, you, are, you have to serve at least five years mm-hmm. in the military right. after you um, – after you finish college, mm-hmm. and it's uh, <laughs> it's it's something to, to behold, basically. Yes, sir. It's because yes, uh, I've I've read about that, and those are I mean those people. You don't read a lot of Navy players who move on to the NFL. There are a few like Napoleon Callum, others in the past, but um, the reason you don't hear about players like Keegan Reynolds who played at Navy and set the all-time NCAA record for most touchdowns playing in the NFL right now is because they're busy learning about how to serve our country, basically. Yes, sir. Yeah. And I wouldn't really say busy because I, I truly believe that the true heroes aren't the football players. It's not the NFL players, but it's the ones that protect our country. Yeah. Yes, sir. And on the other end of that, you went to Florida, too. Yes, sir. And what was it like going to the swamp? <laughs> <laughs> the swamp is huge. <laughs> I mean, the first time you walk down there is... 
<sighs> it just it just <laughs> overwhelms you. The light comes out from the top corner of the stadium. The seats start lighting up. The crowd starts cheering. You just you hear things and you see things that you can only experience at the swamp. Yeah. Which game did you go to? We went to the. Uh, I went to the Florida versus Missouri game. The Missouri game. Yes, sir. Which technically is a division game for them. Yes. Now, even though it, you don't think of it that way, but Missouri still is an SEC East team. But oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. any SEC school is going to be good. Any Power Five school is going to be good. They're right. still playing college football. Yeah. So, no matter who you're playing, mm-hmm. they will bring it. Yeah. You and Ryan and Noah have your own competition going as to who can get the most sacks, but as a unit, you've allowed three touchdowns this whole year, and one of those was in garbage time against Western Guilford. So do you even think about that right now, or are you just so busy focused on the moment and the next game? We're always focused on the moment and the next game. Yes, you know, stats are stats. You know, They're all good to look at and everything, but – we play the game because we play the game. If we all only base it off of the stats and how much you can bench, you know, how how many sacks a person had, then we determine who wins before the game even started. Mm-hmm. But we're only focused on the team in front of us. Mm-hmm. We're not going to look to the playoff game. We're not going to look three games ahead of that. Mm-hmm. We're only focused on the team ahead of us. Yeah. How much is Coach Smith? Would you be as good a group without Coach Smith, do you think? Defensive coordinator? Mm-hmm. No, sir. Coach Smith brings a different aspect to our defense, and I, I just really hope that I can see him uh, progress into a great head coach once Coach Moser leaves. Yeah. Which is, for those who don't know, supposed to be at the end of this yes, year. That's, that's what I'm suspecting. <laughs> I'm not positive, but that's what I'm suspecting. Yeah. yeah, I know. Coach Felines, I was talking with him yesterday, who's the defensive line coach, and he said he was trying to get Coach Moser to reconsider and stay one more year, but he's he's not having very much success yeah. with it. Um, Coach Feline's intense guy. I'm mastering understatement when I say he's an intense guy. What's a week with Coach Feline's like when he's in a bad mood? Uh, <laughs> I'm not a stump stone there with that one because he has to choose his words very carefully, your listener. Let me tell you. <laughs> I, I really wouldn't say it's much different. I mean, he, he goes hard on us. Regardless, Every, all the time. yes, sir. Uh, he goes hardest regardless. Um, the only time he might go easiest if you know we had two, three games in a week, <laughs> which we have had two games in a week, yeah. and that's when he went a little bit um, softer on us. But because of his uh, military background and everything else, he goes hard on us every day, regardless of his attitude. He tries, yeah. um, and I think the rest of the coaching staff as well try to get their feelings out of it and understand we're there to win, yeah. and we're there to make you a better person as well. Yeah. So when I look at you, I mean, and, and there are people kind of peeking at us during this interview here, but when I look at you, you're the type of person, and you, you're looking me right in the eye with every question, saying sir and all that, and you're like, I'm going to be your boss. You're going to be my boss in like 20 <laughs> years, I have a feeling. You, you strike me as that type of guy. You really do. So you, it's just, you're imposing physically, of course, because you're tall, and but I mean, just you're an impressive guy, Stone. Do you do you have people tell you that? I mean, or are you just busy being you? I I just think it's natural. I think it's, my, my parents raised me well, yeah. or at yeah. least I think they did. Because what I do is not. I don't really think about it. It's just what I need to do is mm-hmm. what I think should be done and what I think is respectful. Yeah. Do your parents still teach? Or? Yes, sir. Both of them still teach up at the university. I mean, they're professors, so it's not like teaching is their main job. Mm-hmm. But, yes, they do teach classes. At UNC? Yes, sir. Okay. Wow. Well, um, what's it uh, – as you enter into the playoffs, and by the time people hear this, it'll be tonight, um, I, I think I know the goal here, but uh, will your high school career be complete without a state championship? Mm, I'm sorry, what do you mean by that? I mean, that? Do you, I mean, do you, will your football career – can you walk away from football – happy with your career knowing that you may not have won a state championship? Uh, I w- I'd have to say no with that. Mm-hmm. No, I'm, I'm really hungry. Mm-hmm. I'm hungry for a state championship. I'm also hungry to just, oh, man, I'm just hungry to play some football. It's, been, it's, it's tough because it feels like right now you're starting the season over again. It's been 20 days without a game for you guys. Yeah, it has, and – <laughs> because it is basically like starting the season over again, I'm always excited, but now I'm extremely excited. I'm itching to play. 
it's not like I'm just getting ready to play. I I can't stand not playing this long. Yeah. And I'm just waiting. Okay. It was a large bug that just flew by us here. So, so when when I asked Stone about that last question there, I, I, he had a look on his face no. like uh, <laughs> he had a look on his face like I just gave him sour milk and rotten <laughs> bread for dinner. So I have a feeling that he really is going to be hungry come game tonight time tonight. Stone, thank you so much for taking some time out to talk to us here. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. That is Stone Edwards. Interesting guy. Just a remarkable player for Orange. A defense that, as we mentioned, has only given up three touchdowns defensively this season. Coming up, we'll hear from another instrumental part of the Orange defense, and that is safety Keyshawn Thompson. We'll hear from him in just a moment. This edition of Prep Sports Tonight brought to you by Okanichi Golf Course. A friendly welcome awaits one of the great public golf courses in North Carolina. Okanichi Golf Course is proud to be the home course for the Orange Panthers and the Cedar Ridge Red Wolves men's and women's golf teams. They're open to the public with memberships starting as low as $200. Okanichi is a locally owned third generation family business with some of the best champion Bermuda greens in the area. Visit Okanichi.com for more information or you can call 919-732-3435, schedule a lesson, purchase gift cards or learn more about tea times. And come meet me at Okanichi. All right, Keyshawn Thompson joins us now as Orange gets ready to play fight tonight. Keyshawn, I was just telling Stone Edwards a moment ago, are you feeling like right now you're starting your season all over again because it's been 20 days without a game and then coming up tomorrow night, but tonight by the time people hear this, it's the biggest game of the season, the playoffs. Um, yes, sir. We feel so much like it. Our coaches are putting us in that mindset that the regular season doesn't matter anymore. It's just a new season, and we just got to come out hard. Yeah. You've been practicing about three days a week over the last couple of weeks when you haven't had a game. So what have those practice sessions been like? Um, well, personally, players and coaches think they were just boring because, like, we weren't preparing for a team, but – they did help us a lot because we worked on special teams and things like that. Right. But now that we're preparing for a team, we're a lot more excited. We have a lot more adrenaline, and yeah. we're just ready to play now. Probably the most well-known award for anybody who follows high school sports like I do and for a long time other people uh, is the Extra Effort Award that WREL hands out. It's not quite as important as the Hillsboro Sports Orange Panther of the Week, but it's getting there. Um that's a joke. Uh, but, but, but you won that, and, and you took that home about a month ago. Uh, what's your GPA for those who don't know? Uh, my GPA is a 4.1. Uh-huh. I feel so embarrassed here <laughs> because I, never, I couldn't spell 4.1 even now. What, what do you um, major – what, what do you specialize in, basically? What are your favorite uh, subjects? My favorite subject is English and science, mm -hmm. but I just try to do my best in all subjects, just mm -hmm. prepare well through school, just yeah. like I do with sports. Yeah. Well, when you saw Tom Suter approaching him, I, I assume you grew up watching him, so yes, that had to be a pretty far out feeling right there. Yes, sir, because my freshman year, uh, I think Patrick Pettiford got the award, mm -hmm. and then people kept getting it since, and I've just been hoping to get it, Yeah, and it happened to me, so I was excited. Yeah. What'd your mom say, too, when you were watching that on TV? What'd, you, what'd she say? Or... <laughs> yeah, she was excited, too. <laughs> <laughs> she was just glad that I spoke well when he mm -hmm. asked me questions and stuff with yeah. managers and stuff. Imagine walking through the school next day as the big TV star had to feel pretty good, too, right? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> so what are you looking at um, after Orange whenever you, you uh, finish up with football and when you graduate next year? What, what are you looking at doing? Um, I'm looking to play football. Hopefully it's the school in Pennsylvania that has been giving me interest. Mm -hmm. Campbell has been giving me interest. I'm hoping to play football somewhere. Okay. Not going to play as much basketball this year, from what I heard. But uh, what school in Pennsylvania is it? Just out of curiosity, it's a Lafayette College. Oh, yeah. Sure, Pat Patriot League school. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, it's really nice. Really nice up there. What's it like over at Lafayette? Um, well, I haven't been up there, but a dude, the one of their coaches came down here. Mm -hmm. He had a slideshow of like images and pictures. Their stadium looks really nice and it's mm -hmm. really big. Yeah, he said they're not much of a program, but. Like, they're building, and they have, like, stuff there. So after school, after you graduate their school, it's connections, and you can get a good job. That's the main reason I want to go. What are you looking at for your career? 
Uh, I want to major in business, mm -hmm. and um, yeah. I'm